if I was running Lyft and my team came to me and said, listen, Mr. CEO, whatever my name is, right? We need to kill surge pricing. I'm like, what? You want to kill surge pricing? Uh, let's talk about it, right? So Lyft truly, truly wants to kill surge pricing, right? And they say Lyft has been cutting fares in order to secure more riders. It makes sense. They got both of them, both Uber and Lyft engaged in this complete mismanagement. That's why those two fools, Logan Green and John Zimmer, had to leave. They bring in this Risha repair mechanic to fix this broken engine, right? And so now they say, oh, you know what? We need to cut surge. Okay, let's back up here for a second. Let's back up, right? Um, and they say here, yeah, but that success has come with a literal cost. But can you imagine you abolish surge, right? You abolish surge. Now, riders obviously hate surge, right? And, and, and the problem is that both Uber and Lyft and many other companies are uh, responsible here uh, for this anger that comes from the rider when it comes to surge. When a rider hears surge, passenger hears surge, they go like, Argh! extra money, maybe a lot of extra money that I have to pay because Coachella, it's surging, Taylor Swift concert, it's surging through the roof, right? They get angry. You are taking advantage of me. You are exploiting the situation. Now, the driver on the other side might say, hey, there's an opportunity for me to make a little bit more money. But in business, the way I see it, it's a fine balance. Surge is not a bad thing, but you've got to be realistic about your surge. The moment you start, which both Uber and Lyft are completely guilty, you know, they, they're completely guilty on this one, is that they truly bent over the riders and passengers and said, how much can we extract out of your wallet, out of your account, because we are now taking advantage of the situation. It's Taylor Swift, or it's Coachella, or it's this, or it's that. Let's screw you over on the surge. And they completely effed up, right? They completely effed up with the riders, because the riders, even myself, I've taken Uber and Lyft. I don't like that. Oh, they're trying to take advantage of me. Had they been realistic about the surge, hey, they know, you know, supply and demand, it, it's, it's busier, you pay a little bit of a premium, right? Not, a, not like, for example, when I was at Coachella and there was a $100, um, $100 trip and because of the surge, um, I think they wanted to make it, um, you know, a few hundred dollars, like 400 bucks. Then the rider or the passenger thinks, damn, I'm being taken advantage of, right? So abolishing, abolishing surge, I don't think it's a good idea because all the passengers and riders have been educated about surge. Now, if Lyft were to take surge away, damn, how much of their revenue are they willing to take a hit on? You know, what is it going to show up in the next quarter, in the third quarter when they start abolishing surge? H how do you explain that to everyone, to investors? Oh, you know, we're getting rid of surge. Riders hate it. Investors and these greedy bastards on the top, they just want to see money. So I'm sure they're not happy about this. But the, the, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, they got themselves in this crap, in this mud in the first place because they went completely overboard with surge and, and the passengers know this, right? They were taken advantage of and drivers also feel taken advantage of because even though they skyrocket the, the surge prices, that trickle down effect of that margin because of surge was not passed on to the driver. So they literally found a way through ultra high surge to screw over the passenger and the driver. Driver's not happy, rider's not happy. Now they say, okay, we're going to get rid of this, right? The Ride Health Company reported Tuesday during its second quarter 2023 earnings an increase in riders and decrease in revenue per active rider. That discrepancy was fueled by a decision by the company to, um, to price in line with the market, right? They wanted to be more price competitive with Uber. Uber was kicking their butts on prices. Lyft was too expensive. Lyft was using riders. They lowered the rates and they said, okay, now we got to go a step further. We got to kill surge. Lyft's revenue per rider decreased almost 5% quarter over quarter, 
while the number of active riders increased in the second quarter to 21,487 riders, up from 19,552 in the first quarter. That can't be right. Surely, surely they have more riders than that. Lyft appears to be not only trying to keep prices competitive, I'm sure that's in one particular city, uh, Lyft appears to be not only trying to keep prices competitive, competitive with Uber, it's also working to kill off surge pricing or prime time, as the company calls it. During Tuesday's earnings calls, Risha said that the surge pricing might work. It might work. Not like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty confident it will work. Oh, no, no, it might work, ladies and gentlemen, covering your ass, right? Doesn't sound very assertive. Doesn't sound very confident. Oh, it, oh guess what? I'm going to do something. And it, by the way, it might work. Um, to incentivize more drivers during peak service, but it also acts as a demand suppressor when riders don't want to pay exorbitant fees just to get home after work. Primetime pricing is a bad form of price raising, said Risha. It's particularly bad because riders hate it with a fiery passion. I agree with that. But you're to blame. You overdid it, right? Had you just done decent surges, not crazy surges, decent surges, the riders would have said it's fine, right? And so we're really trying to get rid of it. And because we've got such a good driver supply, it's decreased significantly. David Risha, don't count on that driver supply. Don't count on it, right? Don't count on it. Don't take it for granted. Lyft's driver supply. And then the reason why I say that is because David Risha promised to pay these drivers. He's not, right? He's not. And... They, be, they look at this Russia guy and said, hey, he's coming and he's made these promises. He's not fulfilling his promises, paying us better. So they're leaving. Maybe they're spending more time on Uber. Maybe they, you know, doing DoorDash and Uber Eats. Who knows? Lyft's driver supply is the highest it's been in three years, up uh, more than 20% year over year. Um, and the average hours per active driver has reached a new high above 2019 levels, according to a spokesman for Lyft. Russia noted that this helped the share of rides affected by surge pricing drop down 35% from the first quarter. That has a revenue implication. Yes, it does. We're actually taking less money. Yes, you are, said the executive. But it's good for our riders and it's good for our overall market results. And it's definitely not good for the drivers, David Risha. At least in the short term, ditching surge pricing might serve as a differentiator for Lyft. So what he's trying to say, the word differentiator, he's trying to find ways to truly differentiate himself from Uber. Hey, we came out with these airport novelties. Hey, we are abolishing surge. Hey, we are abolishing pool rides. See, see how he's trying to be completely different to Uber and break those patterns and hoping to capitalize. Here and there it works. Here and there you will please the rider or the passenger a bit more. But the biggest failure to date after 100 plus days with Risha as the captain of the ship and sort of like semi-Titanic ship, right? Is that you are not talking or understanding the language of drivers. You are simply not listening to them. And by the way, David Risha, you owe me $600,000. I want to remind you and I want to remind you executive Mrs. Soon, Mrs. Moon, right? 600 grand it's pay time because i'm costing you a shit load of money each week right and we educate right we educate on cherry picking we educate on filing small claims courses why because the driver should not be shafted by this company live up to your promises that you made in the first hundred days start paying drivers their worth step it up big time right or it will be called the pink Titanic, right? So at least the short-term ditching surge pricing might serve as a differentiator for Lyft as it continues to compete with its so-called big brother Uber. And that ain't a lie because the big brother is definitely called Uber. Now, um, when Mr. Risha came on board, the shares were on $9. Yes, he did get them up a little bit. He did get them up a little bit, but nothing to really get excited about, right? Nothing to really get excited about. And I know this guy is chasing his big 
$900 million possible bonus, a lot of money, right? $900 million if he reaches a certain share price. But you will never, let me, let me look you in the eyes, David Risha, you will never ever achieve your $900 million bonus if you don't start working with us. We are, a, we, we are an army of drivers right now working against you. And the reason we are working against you, the reason why we are pissed off with you, because A, you haven't delivered on your promises, you're cozying up more and more to the rider. You're forgetting about the language of the driver. You're not paying the driver and you're not keeping them safe. Right? I've just named five. I could name more. I named five things right there. Key pointers that you need to address freaking yesterday. Right? So lift. Ah, ah, looks like it went down. It's coming back slightly again. It's on 11 bucks. I, I would... I would have thought by now, at least you would have had it at 15, 17 bucks, right? But you're at 11 bucks. Uh, you got up to 12. Yeah, you, you, the 52 week high was $20, right? The, the, the 52 week low was $7.85 under Logan Green and, 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 and John Zimmer. $7.85. Imagine you bought shares there. Imagine you bought at 785 and you were selling right now. You would have made a 30% return right there. Boom! Right? But uh, this graph, I'm sorry, Risha. You, you know you could do so much better. And we are trying to help you. Desperately trying to help you, right? Like I said, you need a couple of generals on your team. You need the Sergios. You need the rideshare professors. You need the Harrys on your team, Right? And then if you, if you want to act as a team, as a company and a team and, and, and speak the language of the streets, speak the language that drivers understand, right? We don't like algorithms. We don't like executives. They constantly try to find ways or dream up ways to screw us over. We don't like executives. They are constantly climbing into bed and only want to sleep with riders. It's like you just, you, I hate to use this reference, but it's like you just want to have mad sex with riders, right? You're not willing to actually do something exciting for the driver. Get it? Get it? Have a great day, my friends. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Windows up, pepper spray ready, 911 ready, because there's a lot of bad people on the platform that Risha hasn't taken care of yet because they... Kosher uh, Shawi and Risha sleep with everyone, remember? They'll take 25 cents from anyone, right? So you have to always be alert. I make these videos because I want to remind you to keep your guard up, right? Look around, windows closed, doors locked, pepper spray ready. If you're armed, have the gun right, your holster right, have the seat holster. Be ready to rock and roll if needed. Take care of my, take care of my friends. Be safe out there.